only mention the Quran. I'm the Mila Dalal, advocate. I would like to ask that if Islam preaches women's rights are equal to men, why women should be in Parta and why there should be a segregation of men and women in this sort of meeting also? The next question. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Bilal Lala and I am a revert. By profession, I happen to be a lecturer in computers. There is one question which has baffled me over the years, and that question is, why does Islam permit a Muslim man to marry a woman of his choice from Ahle Kitab, maybe Jews or Christians, and the vice versa is not permitted? My name is Roshan Rangwala, a businessman. question is, reply uh, is you said that Islam gives equal right to both ladies and gents, then why men is allowed to keep four wives and ladies are kept away from this privilege? As men can think of another woman, at the same time, after marrying a, one wife, men can think for another woman, why ladies cannot think for another? The next question please. I am Pratash Bhante. First of all, I will thank organizers for calling people of all faiths. And so I am asking another question. For all the religions, whether it is Hinduism, Christian or Islam, in books there are many good things. But for years, after thousands of years, the practices of all the religions have been discriminatory towards women. And no religion is an exception to this. So the question is, what is written in the books, whether it is Bible, Quran or Gita or whatever it is, whether that is more important or the practice of the society which is more important. And if practice is more important, then we should give very little importance to what is being written in all such holy books, including Quran, Gita, whatever it is. So on this, uh, I expect answer where in practice what could be done instead of saying what is being written in this book or that book. <laughs> Next question from the top please. Assalamu alaikum, I am Saima Qadri and uh, my question is that uh, why there are no women prophets in Islam? This is from Vijay from IIT Pawai, Bombay. He asked, Islam does not allow intermingling of sex in workplace. Is this modernizing or outdated? Please explain. Another connected question is, can a woman work as an air hostess since it is a decent and highly paid job? This is from Sujat. According to statistics, it tells us that 50% of the women in America who go to universities and workplaces are raped. Do you know that? 50%. Why? Because most of the jobs in America involve intermingling of sexes. If you think that a lady should be raped, it's modernizing, then Islam is outdated. If you think not, then Islam is the most modernizing. In the name of Allah, most gracious, merciful and bountiful, Assalamu alaikum. I am Pravin Alavya, a practicing lawyer and a researcher in world religions. My question to you, Dr. Nayak, is you mentioned the solitary illustration of a woman who told the body that she is forced into a marriage and her marriage was allowed to be invalidated. This incident took place years ago and on the year, if possible, the body. Quran is the constitution of the rights of women and men. Is there a body? If so, name it, which also enforces the blockage and rights. Thank you. The next question from the chit. Is co-education allowed in Islam? This is from Rashid Sheikh, he's a student. Is co-education allowed in Islam? This is from Jennifer. It says, is it only the husband who can say triple talaq and get on and get one? What has a woman to do if she wants to get divorce or talaq? Question asked is, why aren't women allowed in the mosque? You go to Saudi Arabia, women allowed in the mosque. You go to London, women allowed in the mosque. You go to America, women allowed in the mosque. It's only in India that they're prevented. And a few countries close by. You go to the Haram Sharif. In Mecca, in Masjid Nabi, they're allowed. But Alhamdulillah, 
There are few mosques in India, even in Bombay, which have started allowing women in the mosque. Hope the other mosques will follow. Thank you. The next question. <coughs> Dr. Naik, my question is, for last 1400 years, 1400 years, only main ulamas have interpreted Quran and Hadith. Of course, I was enlightened by your speech in the beginning that Aisha ji was a religious scholar and she used to interpret. My question is, how many women, female ulemas or religious scholars are today to interpret Quran and Hadith? Today, how many? What is the percentage? And another thing, another thing, I am just, I am finishing. This question arises from the Taslima of Bengal that when she narrated something, I mean, Malvi started shouting. There was not a lady ulema to, I mean, reply to this Malvi's or take the side of Taslima or anything. We have not read what Taslima said because we can't get all the literature here in India, either from Pakistan or from Bengal or anywhere. Why didn't any lady support the cause for Taslima Nasreen? The first question arises, should she be supported? <laughs> Regarding the answer for the question of Taslima Nasreen, discuss it available outside in the fire. Discuss it, we had a debate in the Bombay Union of Journalists. Bombay Union of Journalists had a debate between myself and Dr. Vyas and Father Pereira as well as Ashok Shahani, who translated in Marathi Dajja. And many people objected, many people guided me that don't go to the debate, it will be a problem. They will misquote you, and believe me, I have two minds. But finally my father guided me, take the name of Allah, and go and avenge. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, it was only because of Allah's support that the debate was successful. It was so successful that not a single paper reported it. You know that? Not a single paper. Islamic Research Foundation, an international resource center for understanding and clarification on Islam and comparative religion. Islamic Research Foundation 